For 40 years, the athletes who wore the hammer and sickle dominated the sport of gymnastics. 180 gold medals in world and Olympic competition. The Soviet Union was synonymous with gymnastics excellence. They didn't choose their sport, it chose them. Hand-picked as children, the most promising left their families behind to serve their country. The youthful athletes, a powerful metaphor for the strength within the Soviet Union. The final chapter of the Soviet story was written in 1992 at the Olympic Games in Barcelona. There they competed as a unified team for the last time, winning gold in the all-around and team competition. A fitting yet cheerful goodbye. Now, as independent republics, can the dynasty continue, or is the end of an era at hand? Today, they face an explosive women's team led by the most decorated gymnast in U.S. history, reigning world all-around champion, Shannon Miller. She will lead a young and promising squad from the United States into the Goodwill Games. Welcome to the Lennon Sport and Concert Complex here in St. Petersburg for the first of nine days of gymnastics competition here at the Goodwill Games. Hi everyone, I'm Bart Connor and we're getting ready today for the women's team competition. Now in the previous two Goodwill Games, the former Soviet Union women have won 11 of 12 available gold medals. They are going to be strong here as well. I'm joined as always by Kathy Johnson and the Americans in this competition are led of course by... A Shannon Miller, the world all-around champion, and an otherwise rather inexperienced team, Kathy. Having Shannon Miller as part of the U.S. team is certainly an advantage over several of the other teams who are trying to secure medals here. But keep in mind, except for Shannon Miller, this is the biggest meet ever for these kids. They're competing against gymnasts who competed at the World Championship and won medal. That makes Russia and Ukraine the two strongest teams here. But I think the U.S. has an excellent shot at a bronze medal, which would be an outstanding result considering the strength of the Russian and Ukrainian team. But in order to do so, they will have to handle the pressure here and also outcompete Romania and China. Now, I'll give you an idea just how young these young ladies are. Jenny Thompson from the United States just turned 13 years old yesterday here in St. Petersburg. And the team presented her with a cake and some congratulations. She is the youngest national team member on the senior national team for the U.S. ever. Now, as we said, we're going to be seeing the team competition. There are six full teams competing here. There will be four gymnasts on each team. The top three scores in each individual event will count towards the team total. Now, the gymnasts will be competing on the vault, the uneven bars, the balance beam, and the floor exercise. Ready now for the second vault for Mariana Wett. The vault is the first one. And a, a little bit better. Much better vault, Bart. Much better on the pre-flight. She got on just the right angle. Watch here in the slow motion. Her arms will be straighter on the horse. Right there, she pushes up. Better form in the air, and look at the landing. Oh, oh. a major break right on the mount. This is Irina Bulakova from the Ukraine, one of our favorite teams here. The Ukrainians have given us so many great champions over the past. They look quite strong here. Bulakova is 16 years old. She was fourth in the all-around at this year's European Championships. They already have a 9.325 to count in the team competition. She is second up for the Ukraine. Oh, no. This is disastrous. Keep in mind, they can drop one low score. And, of course, this is the one they want to drop. There's an attempt at a one-handed handstand, but you don't see many of those, and especially when a gymnast is slightly flustered after a fall. They don't like to risk holding them too long, do they? I was just going to say she's making nervous mistakes now. Here's the dismount pass. Two back handsprings to a double bat. This will not help the chances of the Ukrainian team, which is certainly one of the favorites for a gold or silver medal here.
getting ready to go on the uneven bars now. This is Yelena Grosheva from Russia. We've been watching this team in the last couple of days in practice, Kathy Johnson, and uh, they are real loose and casual and doing some incredible gymnastics. Do you think they can put it together here? I would certainly think so. They're certainly well-trained, well-prepared, and look consistent in the workout. They were a little nervous in the 30-second warm-up, which is the final touch warm-up just prior to competition. Obviously, because this competition is being held in Russia, we're getting the best gymnast that Russia has to offer. This young lady was 12th in the all-around at the World Championships in Australia. Her teammate before her, Fabrishnova, scored a 9.75. So they're off to a good start. Look at the height on this release move. Beautiful combination of release moves. Very aggressive. Double front dismount. Difficult to land, but she handles it very well. Now over on the balance beam, this is Oksana Niznik. She's 17 years old. Competes for the Ukraine. Off to a good start. She's a very elegant gymnast to watch. <laughs> National champion last year in the Ukrainian championships. Here's her most difficult pass. Three layout step out. Well done. That's a similar pass that you see from Dominique Dawes from the United States performed perfectly. Or checking her balance just a little here and there. Those are usually caused by nerves, and yeah, most of the gymnasts started out a little nervous in this first rotation. And the dismount, a double back. Oh, a step on the landing. Let's take a look at this dismount pass, Kathy, Kathy Johnson. We've seen so many great performers out of the Ukraine. She was a little flustered early, and as you said, it's sometimes difficult to start on the balance beam. It's very difficult to start on the beam. When you've got any kind of nerve, you really have to control that adrenaline. It's hard to do on four inches. Century. ABC's Live World of Sports presentation of the 1994 Goodwill Games from St. Petersburg, Russia continues. Here is Bart Connor. Now on the vault, Jenny Thompson from the United States, originally from Wichita Falls, Texas. She's four feet one and 58 pounds. Oh. oh no. I was very nervous for Jenny going into this event. In the 30 second warm up, she missed this vault entirely, missed her hand. And it was a little scary. And I'm sure she was nervous going into this one. She got on the horse fine, but couldn't get enough push to get the rotation necessary. She's okay, that kind of vault is certainly not dangerous, but it's a big deduction. Well, she certainly has time. She is an exciting young gymnast, the youngest senior national team member ever. And let's get to know Jenny Thompson a little bit better. We certainly will over the next few years. Practicing and perfecting her skills since she was five, Jenny Thompson, now 13 years old, is beginning to realize her goal of competing at the top level of gymnastics, something her coach always knew she'd do. As far as Jenny goes, I knew that Jenny had the talent at six years old because she was just a, an amazing uh, talent at that level. She could keep her legs straight and pointed to everything that she did. But talent alone isn't enough. In 1992, when her coach, Bella Caroli, retired, 
Jenny was faced with the difficult prospect of moving away from Houston and most of her family to train with Steve Nuno in Oklahoma. Well, I don't live with my dad because she couldn't live up here because there wasn't any internet. So she just, I'm not with my brother either. And that's a pretty big sacrifice. Yet Jenny knows that if she wants to follow in the footsteps of world champion Shannon Miller, with whom she's trained and watched for most of her career, this is one of many sacrifices she must make. If you want to get anything, you have to work hard at it. Just set your goals and work for them. And I just try to do my best, and I probably push myself the hardest. I think I've already pretty much been successful, but I would like to be more successful. Coming. Now ready for the second ball for Jenny Thompson. Kathy, a lot of pressure on this young lady. She's going to have to get it together here. They take the best of the two vaults, and she's got a chance here to make it better. Oh! That's major for this team. They're allowed to drop one low score, and since this has a fall, touching the ground is considered a fall. This is an incredible gymnast at five feet, four inches tall. Svetlana Horkina is a dynamo on the uneven bars. Absolutely amazing. Some of those skills she should not even be able to do, considering her height, and she does them easily. Here's the dismount. It's a full twist on the second somersault. Very difficult. Beautiful finish for Svetlana Horkina. Still anchored in St. Petersburg, Russia, the battleship... ...years old from Oklahoma City. The first American ever to win the all-around title at the World Championships back-to-back. -back. Of course, Kim Zemesko was the first to do it in 1991 for the United States. Kathy, you've been watching Shannon here the last couple of days of practices. Uh, how do you feel about her preparation coming into this event? Well, certainly on this particular event, the vault, she is very well prepared. prepared. She does this vault as well as anyone in the world. It's a difficult vault to land. She lands facing away from the horse, which means she doesn't have the luxury of seeing the ground before she lands. Oh, big step on the landing. Unfortunately, in the 30-second warm-up, she did that beautifully and stuck the ball. She'll have one more chance. Now notice, she gets on the horse fine, gets good block up way up in the air. She opens up just a little bit too late, which makes her over-rotate the ball and have to take those two steps forward. On the, on the beam is Bit Potkopaeva from the Ukraine. Kathy, this is certainly one of your favorite gymnasts. She has such elegant lines, lovely movement, beautiful difficulty in her exercise. Very high front somersault. That's a unique move. A little half turn spin on her head. She is such a lovely gymnast on this event. Look at every single skill. Legs perfectly straight, beautiful toe point, and very exact in her movement. Second on the balance beam at the World Championships this year in Australia. Both of them double back. Lots of difficulty in this routine, and very well done. Shannon Miller won five medals at the Olympics in Barcelona, two silvers and three bronzes. Interestingly enough, she was the youngest national senior team member ever for the United States at 12 years old. And then little Jenny Thompson came along and eclipsed her by a few months. Now 17, a mature veteran of gymnastics. This vault is worth a 10.0 according to its level of difficulty. So if she can get a better landing, she can get a big score here, and certainly the United States needs that from her. 9575 was her score on her first vault, not what we see normally from Shannon Miller. 
there. He was really trying to not move those feet on the landing. You'll notice she made the correction, opened up a little bit sooner. You can see it right here. She extends her hips out. Oh, she rolled her toes under. That couldn't have been comfortable <laughs> on the landing. Here's another look at it. Nice position in the air, but watch right as she lands. Her toes actually curl under. And it almost trips her up a little bit. And after the first rotation, we welcome you back to Wide World of Sports and ABC's continuing coverage of the Goodwill Games. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Mark Jones. And just to bring you up to date on the scores out at the gymnastics venue, Mariana Webster of the U.S. scored poorly on the vault. Portina of Russia received the highest score from the judges, and Shannon Miller the sixth highest score. As a result, the United States is in third place behind Russia and Romania after the first rotation. And Mark, I think the American team is struggling with a little bit of nerve. They are fairly inexperienced. And the flip side of the coin, of course, Julie, is that the Russians are coming up with a very inspiring performance yes. so far in front of their countrymen. You know, S at Svetlana Horkina from Russia. She's currently first in the all-around, although the all-around is not being contested today. She is leading her team, Russia. And this is a routine I have looked forward to this entire competition. She's 5'4", which is so tall for a gymnast. And she is a master on this event and does a new skill that I really haven't seen. It's full twisting back handspring down to her feet. And she actually mounts with it as well. Russia leads the team competition. Romania second. The United States currently in third. And tumbles right out of it. So back handspring layout step out. Now watch this pass. Beautiful handstand position, showing off her flexibility. She steps into that handstand now, full twisty back handstand, swing through. And she makes it. <laughs> I don't know how. Most gymnasts would have been off. So many people comment, commented on Bogatskaya, the former Russian gymnast that was so tall. Well, she was even taller. Five feet Another four. difficult... Oh, oh, that is a shame. In terms of the team competition, this won't necessarily hurt them. You can drop the one low score, and they are so strong that they can probably make up for it. But it's going to be too bad for her as an individual, and it could have been a huge score. Beautiful. Cartwheel swing through to a double twist. On every event, she does unusual elements and original combinations. This was beautiful, and unfortunately, she just rushed it a little bit in the air, tried to get her feet down on the beam too soon, which you can't blame her. Oh, that's too bad. She was so perfect in the workouts and so cool and calm and collected and poised. She did not expect it. We'll see her in two more events today in the competition and hopefully in the all-around competition as well. Now on the floor, this is Nisnik. She comes from the Ukraine, Oksana Nisnik. Another example of just a tiny gymnast packed full of power. and elegance, far beyond her years.
building. A very elegant, beautiful routine with great tumbling. And a lovely finish for Oksana Nisnik from the Ukraine, 17 years old. Now for the United States, on the uneven bars, this is Sunny Maduna. She's 15 years old. It's a great event for Sunny. Score on the beam for Horkina was a 9-2-2-5. Mount is tough to land, but she does it. Double front, a half twist. Interesting combinations, and as you said, a big dismount. Watch the dismount. She actually does the half twist a little sooner than most people do that do that dismount, so it's almost like front end back out. Strong performance for Maduna. The United States currently in third. Like back home in the States, the weekends are a time to catch up on the errands. And here is a typical shot that sells cheese in St. Petersburg. I've sampled some of it myself, and it's very good. ABC's Wide World of Sports presentation of the 1994 Goodwill Games continues. From St. Petersburg, Russia, Julie Moran. Have you ever heard the phrase, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt? Well, this is the motto of Special Olympics. Although over 1.4 million athletes in 136 countries around the world are participating in Special Olympics, the idea of reaching out to these special kids is relatively new here in Russia. Here's Bart Connor with more. In addition to the more than 2,000 athletes who have come to St. Petersburg to compete in the Goodwill Games, there's another group of athletes in town who are getting quite a bit of attention themselves. These are the athletes from Special Olympics. Gymnasts like Victor and Alyosha, they're training. They want to come to Connecticut next summer for the 1995 Special Olympics World Summer Games. Today, we're at Orphan Boarding School Number 4, just outside St. Petersburg in the city of Pushkin, where children with mental retardation are learning how to achieve through their participation in the world of Special Olympics. This program, founded by Eunice Kennedy Shriver 26 uh -huh. years ago in the United good. States, focuses on these athletes' abilities, not on their disabilities, and reminds us that everyone's a winner. First foot is here. Right? Okay? The first hand is here. No? The second hand is here. The second foot goes here. Okay? In what is perhaps a reflection of changing attitudes in Russia towards people with special needs, yet in a country racked by economic and political problems, the Russian people have found a place in their hearts for these truly special athletes. <laughs> Natalia Slatkova, who helped create Russian Special Olympics, knows the importance of sports to these young people. The most important goal of Special Olympics is um, um, to help people with mental retardation to adapt to adapt uh, to society. They have abilities and skills and courage of Special Olympics. So they are winners not only in sports and uh, in uh, their lives. Okay. And we look forward to welcoming 300 youngsters, which made up the former Soviet Union at next July's Special Olympics World Summer Games in New Haven, Connecticut. Now we're going to head back out to Lennon Sports Complex for more gymnastics. Let's rejoin Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson. Here at the Goodwill Games in the third round of competition. This is Kochetkova on the balance beam from Russia. Who has to be one of the strongest gymnasts I've ever seen. She really does skills with such ease because of that strength. Beautiful layout. Very floaty, way up over the beam. Oh, 
Oh, give me some back handsome. Oh, that's hard, and she saved it. That'll be a deduction now. Interesting that the Russian team, this is a team competition, and they're not holding back anything. They're going through every move. Typically, gymnasts tend to get a little more conservative in the team competition, hoping to hold it together for the team. They don't seem afraid of anybody here. Watch this pass. Way up over the beam. She finished the double back up over the height of the beam and just dropped it in perfectly. This is Bulakova from the Ukraine. uneven bars this is Jenny Thompson 13 years old and when she's on in this event she is spectacular Kathy but this is her favorite event I asked her why because it's fun and she can do it well nice aggressive swing Oh, that's a long way to make that transition for her. She's only four feet one, 58 pounds. Might as well be a mile. <laughs> oh. oh, no! Oh, what a shame for her. Had a great routine going. We have to tell you, Jenny did suffer a broken toe just recently. Has not been able to train as much as she would like. Beam now, this is Fabrishnova from Russia. Score for her teammate from Russia on the balance beam, whom you saw, Kochetkova, 9.65. Quite a bit of pressure on this gymnast. They have a fall already, so they need a perfect performance here. The athlete were training the last couple of days, but we didn't see Fabrishnova the first day. She was home in bed with a fever, but she seems to have recovered pretty well. That's the sign of a veteran. She checked her balance, but in such a way that it was hardly detectable. Now watch here, 
three layout step out. And she's checking her balance. She's tiny, just a tiny bit off, but you would never know it because she stopped it in that position. And it looks wham. Now over to the floor. This is Lilia Potkopaeva. And Kathy, you have to admit, this is one of your favorite gymnasts of all time. Absolutely. She has points that very few gymnasts have. And just a way of performing that's a step above most gymnasts. <laughs> Look at that. Who, who wouldn't be impressed with a double front? gymnasts are tumblers, some are dancers. This is one gymnast that falls. for Jenny Thompson on the bars. Here is the world champion, Shannon Miller. And she's had a lot of success on this event. Reigning world champion. Pull over the bars, right into a release swing. The only place she could possibly have trouble, she's struggling with in workout, comes up right at the end, the dismount, We'll see which one she plans to do. It should be a double layout. Oh, and she pulled it around. You can see she's working though. When you grow four inches in two years and you're trying to do a double laid out somersault, it's a little harder to get it around. Boy, you gotta hand it to her. Good for Shannon Miller. She has to be relieved at that dismount. She had plenty of trouble in the practice session. This is pure will. She wills herself around to her feet. Very impressive. So for Shannon Miller, after a shaky performance on the vault, well, not too shaky, a slight bobble on the vault, she finishes the uneven bars very strongly. And so here are the standings in the women's team competition after the second rotation. Russia is first, Romania close behind, Ukraine is third, the United States has slipped to fourth. After two rotations, Spain and then China. 180 gold medals in world and Olympic competition. The Soviet Union was synonymous with gymnastics excellence. They didn't choose their sport, it chose them. Handpicked as children, the most promising left their families behind to serve their country. The youthful athlete, a powerful metaphor for the strength within the Soviet Union. The final chapter of the Soviet story was written in 1992 at the Olympic Games in Barcelona. There they competed as unified team for the last time, winning gold in the all-around and team competition. A fitting, yet tearful goodbye. Now, as independent republics, can the dynasty continue, or is the end of an era at hand? Today, they face an explosive women's team led by the most decorated gymnast in U.S. history, reigning world all-around champion, Shannon Miller. And promising squad from the United States into the Goodwill game. And welcome to the Lennon Sport and Concert Complex here in St. Petersburg for the women's gymnastics competition here at the Goodwill game. Let's take a look at the results after two rotations, the halfway point in the team competition. As you can see, Russia holds on to a strong lead, Romania second, 
The United States and the Ukraine are locked in a battle for the bronze medal position at this point. And hello everyone, I'm Bart Connor, and we're glad you've joined us. In the past two previous Goodwill Games, the former Soviet athletes have won 11 of 12 gold medals available. They have totally dominated. And joining me as always is Kathy Johnson. And Kathy, when you think about these young athletes who have come to this competition, the Russians have brought their best, and maybe we're not surprised that they're in first place at this point. Bart, they really are untouchable here. They are doing beautiful gymnastics. They're fresh off the European Championship, so they are in great shape. And unless they fall completely apart, there's no way they won't run away with this thing. And especially they have Dina Kochetkova. She was a bronze medalist in the all-around at the World Championships. And as you can see here, she has perfect form, wonderful strength and power, and all the skill in the world to be one of the best gymnasts in the world. The Russian team definitely showing a lot of class here, but let's talk about the American Shannon Miller, the world all-around champion and the veteran, otherwise quite a young team for the Americans. Are you surprised where they stand right now, sort of locked in the battle for the bronze? No, they're exactly where I thought they would be. They're a nervous team right now because this is a big meet for them, and Shannon is providing some wonderful leadership for them, but uh, they're going to really have to hold it together to try and get that bronze medal. Shannon never ceases to amaze me. I gain more and more respect for her, even when she's struggling, which she has been a little bit here. She pulls together amazing routines. She has incredible will. Once again, it is the women's team competition. There are six full teams here to compete. Each team has four athletes, and the top three scores out of four in each event count towards the team total. The women will be competing on the vault, the uneven bars, the balance beam, and the floor exercise. So coming up later, we're going to have an opportunity to see the final results here in the women's team competition at the Goodwill Games featuring world all-around champion from the United States, Shannon Miller. The U.S. already has a mighty mountain to climb. Isn't it something, Shannon Miller, the wily... These are the fresh faces of an old mystique. Little Russian girls, gymnasts, 6, 9, 12 years old, training at the renowned Dynamo Sports Club in Moscow. It's difficult. For some, we'll find only disappointment, while others soar on the wings of talent. 12-year-old Yelena Trichnikova is one of the gifted, moving up to the junior national team. But will she inherit the perfected system that was Soviet gymnastics, or will she and others fly in the shadows of a Russian version in decline? Physical fitness and the communal nature of sport was an important part of the old Soviet order. Lenin idealized the citizen worker with balanced physical and intellectual development. Under the rule of Joseph Stalin, all were to be prepared to defend their country. The organization and celebration of sports became an enormous part of society. Gymnastics was widely practiced, but its highest expressions were seen only at Spartacus, the all-Soviet sports festival. Soviet gymnastics made its international debut at the 1952 Helsinki Olympics. The women, led by Maria Gorokovskaya, stunned the world with their complete dominance. This victory began a gymnastics dynasty. For the next 40 years, the Soviet women would win all 10 Olympic team competitions they entered. They won 7 of 10 all-around titles and 158 medals overall. They always had great individual performers. Larissa Latinina, starting in 1956 and through three Olympics, set the all-time record for medals won with 18. And she became a national hero at home. Soviet stars such as Ludmila Turisheva, winner of nine medals between 68 and 76, and the spectacular Olga Korbut, kept the continuity of excellence flowing into the 80s. After the Olympic boycotts of 80 and 84, Yelena Shushanova led a strong Soviet team to victories at the 86 Goodwill Games and the 88 Seoul Olympics. The last team of the Soviet era competed as the unified team in 92 at the Barcelona Olympics. It won a 10th straight team title in the all-around goal for Tatiana Kutsu. When the Soviet Union dissolved, Russian state support for gymnastics at all levels was severely cut. As a result, coaches and top athletes have left the system, junior programs have diminished, and the talent selection process has suffered. The system remains in place, but teeters on the edge of decline. Former Soviet star Mikhail Voronin is director of gymnastics at Moscow Dynamo, which has developed many champions for the national team. I see only one problem. 
money. There are no other problems. Problems with food, coaches and equipment are closely linked to the lack of money. We are experiencing a crucial stage in Russian gymnastics. Either we will rush forward with new energy or fall down a steep hill. Some of this decline is evident at the Russian National Training Center 45 minutes outside of Moscow. Amidst the gloomy landscape and peeling paint, the women's team members live three to a room in substandard condition. But no one is complaining. They're here to be champions. These girls, just 15 and 16, are the team for the Goodwill game. They are Dina Kotikova, Svetlana Kortina, Oksana Pabichnova, and Elena Groshiva. They're young, fearless, and committed. Recruited from nursery schools at six, some have nearly 10 years invested in gymnastics. All are focused on training, hard training, three times a day, six days a week, over 200 days a year. They're led by Leonid Arkaev, former Soviet and now Russian head coach. He feels the system is still theirs. I can say that the Russian gymnasts are the inheritors of the Soviet school of gymnastics, and in that respect, nothing has changed. The only change at present, of course, is inadequate financing. But it is of a temporary nature, and eventually, things are going to get better. As 15-year-old Elena Grosheva works to perfect her skills, she is mindful of maintaining the winning legacy. Of course, we feel the burden of responsibility. It would have been much easier for us if the Soviet Union hadn't split up. We lost strong gymnasts to the Ukrainian and the Belarusian team, but we'll carry on, no matter what. And their efforts have paid off. At April's World Championships, the women won medals in every single event. The Russian men and women combined led the medal count. It is not clear whether their success can approach Soviet proportion, but a quick demise for Russian gymnastics seems unlikely. However, with a backdrop that was Soviet gymnastics and Russia's current economic crisis, it will take courage for talented athletes and coaches to stay the course at home. Leonid Arkayev has no doubt about his girls. We have never lived in luxury, and if you look back into the sociology of our sport, you'll see that most of our children came from poor families. So the current situation is nothing new for us, and we will survive. We've got guts, and we can take a punch. You know, four years ago I was at that training center, and it is a very basic place, but basic is really the key. Those kids are so grounded in fundamentals, it's like they can't make a mistake. And again, the youth is something that we've been talking about all evening long. And keep an eye out on these youngsters, because come 1996 in Atlanta, we're going to be hearing from them. Right, but as highly touted as the Russians are, they still have to keep proving it. And coming up next on the show, we'll take you to the competition. Gymnastics started Saturday night with team competition. Could world champion Shannon Miller get the United States pointed toward the goal? We'll get specific when the games continue. Welcome back to the women's gymnastics team competition here at the Goodwill Games. Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson. Let's take a look at our standings after two rotations. The halfway point in the competition, solid Russian team in first, Romania second, Ukraine and the United States in a hot battle for the bronze medal there at the halfway point. We're getting ready now for the third of four rotations in the women's team competition. On the balance beam for the United States, this is 15-year-old Sunny Maduna. <gasps> oh. Oh, that, that is unexpected. I was just getting ready to say she was an excellent person to put up first for this team. I watched her during the workout. And she was very steady, very calm on beam. And unfortunately, it's not the case now. She's a little nervous. It's very difficult to miss your mount and come back and regain your poise. The U.S. team was third after the first rotation. They have dropped to fourth after two rotations. So they're feeling a little bit of the pressure here. We've talked about the U.S. team being a combination of one veteran, Shannon Miller, and otherwise three relative newcomers to international competition like the Goodwill Games. As tough as this is for her, this is a good experience because she needs this under her belt. She's making some mistakes, but just she'll learn the world will keep on turning. She goes back to the gym, learns from this, and puts it behind her. And we've all been there. 
The entire U.S. team trains in Oklahoma City under Peggy Lydic and Steve Nuno. Good dismount. A little straight-legged on the landing. Just a lot of nerves there. Let's take a look at this mount, Kathy. She seemed very straight, but then just panic <laughs> struck in. She was, a, you know, a tiny bit off to the left. She might have been able to correct it. A veteran probably could have done so. This is the second vault for Tatiana Malia from the Ukraine. Nice power on the vault. Pike, you can somersault that's worth a 9.8. It's done perfectly. Of course, she had the step on the landing, but beautiful technique. Nice lift. Good pike position. The Ukrainian team in third place, just ahead of the United States. Now on the floor, this is Grosheva from Russia. performance watching the russian team here this week they've been very loose in practice and doing incredible difficulty and yet really pretty cool about it all watch this i don't know how you can be cool about doing a double twisting front but she perfectly this is that double pike and watch the landing you just cannot do it better than this Stands right up, doesn't budge. The Russian team has uh, impressed us a great deal the last couple of days. They, you know, you usually expect them to be so uptight, and in the past they have been so intense and so businesslike, but the young ladies are competing a lot more casual these days. I loved watching them train. They were having so much fun and doing great gymnastics in the process. This is Bulakova on the vault. Your Chanko vault, that's the round off entry, yet she did a half twist off the board. Typically we see them go backwards onto the horse and did a front tuck off. They're really trying to encourage more originality on this event. For the United States on the balance beam, the score, by the way, for Sonny Maduna was an 8.975. This will be Mariana Webster. I saw her about a month ago compete in a dual meet with USA and Romania. She placed second in a strong field of competitors. Now, if she can just keep her cool up here, she is excellent on this event and usually very steady. This is the team competition, so the top three of four scores count for each team. The U.S. has already had a miss with Maduna. Very aggressive on her landing. This is what you have to be in this type of competition when nerves are high. Good control. so tempting, Bart, when you're nervous to hold that. 
because you don't want to make a big mistake instead of just going for it like you do in workout, being aggressive, because that's when you have the success on this event. Very good performance and an important one for the U.S. They really need two more strong performances to stay in the hunt for that medal. Keep in mind, in the team competition, Russia leads, Romania second. The Ukraine has moved up to third ahead of the United States, who is in fourth. So that's an important performance for the U.S. team. And for Russia now, this is Orkina. As you mentioned earlier, Kathy Johnson, she's tall. And she can do things that you just wouldn't expect that she could be able to do at five feet four inches tall, very tall for a gym. This is her toughest event. Focusing double back. I think she's just stayed in bounds. It's hard to see from our point of view. from the United States, a 9.7, so a strong routine there for the U.S. performing for Harkina from Russia, easily the deepest team here in this competition. She is completely amazing with her ability to handle her height. That is a beautiful t triple twist, which is easy when you're taller, but to do the other skills that she's done. Well, the Russian team continues to look just terrific here in Russia. They've sent their best. Well, here is 13-year-old Jenny Thompson, struggling a little bit today. Just 4 feet 1 and 58 pounds, and she is a dynamo on this event. I think we have to be really careful, we, the media, the people in the gymnastics community. She's so talented, and everybody is just so excited about her and keeps talking about that. Don't forget, she's so young, and under this kind of competitive pressure, <laughs> and performing incredible skills like that, she's bound to make mistakes in the beginning and to not freak out and think, oh, there's no way that she's going to get it all together. She's getting it all together. She lay out, step out. Her coach, Steve Nuno, realizes she has a really unique resolve and decided why not move her up to the senior level. It's an unusual move for just a 13-year-old. But he thinks she can handle this level of competition, and she probably can. She certainly has a level of gymnastics physically to do it. The score back over on the floor for Horkina was a 9.85, the highest of the day. Her dismount, full twisting double back. Boy, does she do the big skills so well. Great technique, unusual power with such a tiny little gymnast. And sure, she's got to brush up on straighter legs and pointer toes and on some of the dance elements. She needs to clean and polish, but that'll come. 
But you don't often see a 13-year-old that does a full twisting double back, the same dismount you see from Shannon Miller at the end of that routine. <laughs> She's starting to relax a little bit now. Fabrishnova on the floor from Russia. By the way, back over on the vault, the score was a 9-6 for Bullock of a second vault. amount of talent and going for all the big tricks here's where she landed a little bit short but she was able to pull it through the timing was just off between the two somersaults now in the vault from the ukraine this is nizhnik and this vault will amaze you you look at her and she looks so frail and yet watch the power and the lift off the horse. Pike's Cuervo. That's a half twist and then a back somersault on the after flight. Her technique is really just right on here. Good lift. There's the half twist and then a pike back somersault. She could come up with a better landing and get a bigger score this next ball. That's a correction she's very capable of making. Well, here's the world champion, not only in the all-around, but also on this event, the balance beam, Shannon Miller from the U.S., currently in fourth place in the all-around. She needs a strong performance here, as does the United States team. She's gone back to this mount on the balance beam. She, for a while, performed a front somersault on the beam. I think this is a good move especially for this competition. The score over on the floor for our all-around leader, Bob Rishnova, with a 9.775. Good recovery, but... That's a major deduction, especially for Shannon Miller. You don't typically see a mistake like that. Oh, and another cover. good save. I thought she was off there. A less experienced gymnast would have been, Bart. Nisnik on the vault had a 9.575. Very difficult dismount. Mount up, full twisting double back. Got to work. Oh. She's having trouble in the workout, under rotating, and I really think she had that in her mind and knew she had to go hard, which she did. Pulled it around just a little too much. Here's her two layouts, and I don't think I've ever really seen her have trouble with this path. So that's unusual. As you mentioned, she did have trouble in the workouts underdoing things. Perhaps she's overdoing things here a little bit today just to compensate. It makes perfect sense to. It's exactly what any other gymnast would do in that situation, but you can see her heels kind of caught the mat. And it made her stumble backwards because keep, she was so over-rotated. Keep in mind, the all-around competition is not at stake today. It's just the team competition. Russia holds the lead and back over to floor exercise. This is Kochetkova from Russia. She's currently second in the all-around behind her teammate. 
Fabrizio Bar. Those of you who admire Julianne McNamara of the United States during her career must see the resemblance here. She reminds me so much of Julianne in her early years. Of course, Julianne McNamara, gold medalist from the United States in the 84 Games. Let's update you on a couple of scores here for Shannon Miller, an uncharacteristic 9.525 on the balance beam, and Jenny Thompson had a 9.55. Now this is Lilia Potkopaeva over on the vault. <laughs> beautiful vault probably the best of the entire competition so far excellent technique on this in fact close to perfect i'd say right on top of the horse legs perfectly together toes pointed throughout the entire ball and just the tiniest of hops on the landing and a strong finish for the ukrainian team putko paive who's just ahead of the united states they're in third u.s is in fourth russia leads and romania is in second Romania continues to pour it on on a balance beam. This is Ana Maria Bican. All of the Romanians performing a very long, difficult pass. Four elements. They really do seem to attack on the balance beam. Very quick, sharp, precise movements. Bart, when you're not prepared to perform on the balance beam with nerves, it, it feels like having an out-of-body experience. You don't even have control over legs, arms. Gymnasts practice so hard and do pressure sets, meaning this set is the only one that counts, so that you know what it feels like to be nervous and still perform like that, just solid as can be. Well done for Ana Maria Bicon. Excellent technique on these back handsprings. Perfectly aligned. Look how high the double back was. As she finished the rotation, her head was still the level of the balance beam. Sure makes it easy to land. Only 14 years old. Cool and composed here at the Goodwill Games. Now back over to the vault. This is Yevdokimova from Kazakhstan. I love seeing this vault. <laughs> you just don't see it ever. I think I've seen it a couple times in men's competition. Because of the look on uh, the faces over there on the judging panel, I think they might be having a little bit of trouble with the computer system because it looked like they were just frustrated with something. Not that they're having trouble coming up with the score. Because there is a delay on the vault, now we're going to go over see and see Monica Martin from Spain on the bars. While we wait for the score of the first vault, you have to keep up. Thank you. 
Oh no. I was just getting ready to say what uh -huh. nice form she has on this event and she just completely missed that element. At this point what happens is the gymnast loses a half a point from the judges and they have to continue the exercise where they made the mistake. This will be their second major mistake on this event. Nice level of difficulty in your routine. Two release moves. Here's the dismount. Interesting technique on those giants into the dismount. But it sure works. Here you can see she just did not make it all the way up into this handstand. Broke form and then just entirely missed the skill. She was supposed to go right to the handstand and pirouette out of it. Okay. Back over to vault now. Yev Dotkimova from Kazakhstan. This is a really unusual vault, the handspring laid out front. She scored a 9.725 on the first vault. She could just stick the landing. She'll get a big score. Oh, no. She'll keep that first one. First vault was much better, and I, I feel sorry for her because she had to wait so long between the vaults hard to improve. Remember the improvement you were supposed to make. So we go from the vault bed over to the balance beam. Kakovan from Romania. Again, that same long pass. The score for Ana Maria Bican was a 9.725. Difficult jump. Her head dropped back in the air. You take your eyes off the beam. a shame. She looks straight, Bart. I'd love to see that in replay because the back handspring looks perfect. The layout looks straight over the balancing. She must have seen something else and it panicked her. Back over on the uneven bars, 9.025 to score for Monica Martin. You have Dokimova, 9.5 on her second fall. Dismount pass, very well done. Notice how tightly she keeps her legs together on everything. Just makes everything look beautiful. This is a shame, because she was just straight. I think she was worried about this. She stood there a long time before she went into it. She was straight there, straight there. That's just a matter of will. When you're over the bouncing and you see even the tiny bit off, you can pull it back on. She just got nervous. Now back over to vault, Yelena Piskun. We've seen her before, Kathy Johnson, in this event as the world champion. She does this easily. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is the best she's ever done it. And that may be the highest score of the day. Perfect technique and a wonderful landing. Not only is it the most difficult vault being done, she's the highest above the horse, anybody in the competition, and the landing was amazing perfectly in line with the horse, right down the middle. Back over to floor, Lou Oli. As you can see, the competition is furious here, fast and furious. They cut from one event to the next. Lou 
Lee, the world champion on the uneven bars. The score back over on the vault for Piscoon, her first vault on 9.85. Highest score so far today. The only mistake for Romania on the balance beam, Kako Vian, her score was a 9.2. Nothing special, but Luo Li from China. So here are our standings after three of four rotations. Russia holding on to the lead, Romania in second, and the United States and Ukraine, U.S. just slightly over three-tenths of a point behind Ukraine in a battle for the bronze. We will be set for our fourth and final rotation when we come back. Welcome back to the gymnastics women's team competition here at the Goodwill Games. After three rotations, the team competition is very, very close. Russia leads. Romania is second. The Ukraine is in third. And the United States will be in fourth. There you have it. 87.975. The Russia team has a big lead over Romania, nearly a point. Six tenths back is the Ukraine, and the United States just three and a half tenths out of third place, which, as you mentioned, Kathy Johnson, at the top of the show, a bronze medal for the United States in this strong field of competition would be a very good result for them. Absolutely, Bart. And it's a little surprising. We didn't expect Romania to be this good based on their workout. Compared to the team from the Ukraine, they looked stronger, and it's a different story here in the actual competition. Now from Spain, this is Castro. They've had difficulties here today. This is her first international competition. Veronica had a good result in the Junior European Championships just this year. She was second in the all-around. That's an example of how fickle this event can be. She just performed the long pass that she was having so much trouble with in the workouts and then broke on a full turn and now came back and just got flustered. You really have to learn to keep your calm on this event, no matter what. and it was just complete panic from the time she took off in the beginning and when you're in that situation it's very difficult to be aggressive on the landing over to the vault now Jin Yi. good vault the Chinese are now, they, they're finishing up on their two weakest events. Vaulting, and of course the tumbling on the floor exercise. But this was pretty good, right on the top of the horse, nice position in the air. When this first vault was brought into competition by Yurchenko back in the 80s, this was a blessing for the Chinese team because it made them much stronger vaulters than having to perform the traditional type vaults, which took a lot more power. 
And now we move back over to the floor exercise. Angela Ginfu from Romania. With the exception of one mistake on the balance beam, they've been quite solid today. And that's the reason they're nine-tenths of a point behind Russia going into this rotation. Castro was an 8.9. The music malfunctioned. <laughs> Either they started the music before she was in position or it's the wrong music. We'll see. on the landing. Nice combination of difficult tumbling passes. Unfortunately, this one went out of bounds. Look how far she's traveling. It's no wonder she just carried it too far. Now, she, if she could have stuck that landing, she would have stayed in bounds. But she was a little off center and had a little too much momentum and stepped backwards out of bounds. Here's the dismount. Triple twist. Beautiful position, just not quite around on the twist. So ankle problems for Gimpu from Romania, but she doesn't seem too uptight about it. Petersburg, Russia's window to the west. Get to know the opulence of its cathedrals, the grandeur of its palaces, and the culture of this romantic remnant of Tsarist society. St. Petersburg, from Turner Publishing, now in bookstores. Now to the floor, Anna Maria Bican from Romania. Romania doing well. Oh, she went out of bounds. By about a quarter of an inch, Bart. Bican, by the way, is third in the all-around behind Kochetkova. Slightly ahead of her teammate Kako Vaughn, but Kako Vaughn had a mistake. Here's where she stepped out of bounds. Now watch how close she is to just staying within the line. They're allowed to touch the line, but they can't go over, and her heel is just about a quarter of an inch over the line. Nice dismount. Good difficulty for the end of the routine. She had nice technique. Triple twist. Look at the height. She's way up in the air. Really pulls it all the way around. 
Remember, it's only one-tenth of a point deduction for the step out of bounds. She's third in the all-around and will remain in the hunt. Next up on the uneven bars is an Olympic gold medalist as a member of the former Soviet team in the 92 Olympic Games. She was also a finalist on the floor. Oksana Chusovitina, Uzbekistan. She was one of the first gymnasts to perform that skill and this skill as well at the World Championships in 91. She's a little short on all her moves. That move should have gone to a handstand on low bar to really get full difficulty. Dismount, full twisting double back. She said she took up gymnastics at the age of seven. She went to watch her brother work out and kind of got interested. Boy, has she done well. Nice position. Those inverted giants. See, right there, really should have gone to a handstand. Even if she doesn't need it for her level of difficulty, it just looks better and helps the transition. Dismount is a double back with a full twist, but the full twist is on the second somersault. We see it sometimes in the first, sometimes on the second. Actually, hers was kind of right in between. We call that a half in, half out. You know, at the 91 World Championships, she was a last minute replacement for one of her teammates who got injured, and she won the gold in the floor exercise. Chusovitina. So the gymnastics competition continues here at the Goodwill Games and the women's team. The Russian team is now over on the vault. This is their final event. Yelena Grosheva, currently fourth place in the all-around. This is a very good event. For Russia. Actually, they don't have a bad event. So, <laughs> And they're currently three of the top four in the all-around, although that's not being contested today. That's just an indication how strong they are. Pike front somersault. Now, that's only worth a 9.8, but she performed it very well. Had a step on the landing. That'll be the main deduction in this vault. Also, a little leg separation, but... Right there, you can see as she comes in for the landing. Those are ever so slight. Very good technique. Lift up into the vault. Now, if she adds a half twist to that sometime, it'll be worth a 9.9. .9. That's how you see the level of difficulty begin to climb, and it's worth more. But as it stands, it's worth a 9.8. Well, next up on the balance beam is an interesting story. This is Kuznetsova. Evgenia Kuznetsova. She's from St. Petersburg here. Although that, of course, is in Russia. She's not a member of the Russian team. The Hungarian team did not show up at the competition here the other day, so the local organizers thought it might be nice to include another gymnast and so they put in her and she's the best representative of gymnastics here in the st petersburg area of course she can't compete for medals oh, oh what a shame i watched her in the workouts and she was just so good on this event There's an idea wow. combination. <laughs> that is great. We haven't really seen that type of skill on the beam yet. Just 13 years old. First place in the Russian Youth Championships. Now we're going to go over to the floor exercise for the United States. This is Sunny Maduna. She's very dramatic on this event, and it works so nicely with the music. Score for 
Groshiva on the vault. Her first vault was a 9.625. Her second vault a some parts but she sure finished on a bright note a lovely routine you can really see how hard she works on everything this is Niznik Oksana Niznik from the Ukraine oh a little break in form there we noticed that in workout this is certainly her weakest event and the Ukraine really needs to be strong here. Pike double fly away. Big leg separation on the landing. She has some deductions in that routine. Her scores have ranged between 9.5 and 9.7 all day long. Notice the leg really bending when she re the bar. And the height wasn't really there on the release anyway. Our Ukrainian team is in third place right now, ahead of the United States. Back over to the vault, Kochetkova. And watch this, she flies off the horse. <laughs> oh, the best landing of the night, I would say, on vault. She's our leader in the all-around, currently with a 29-3-5 over her teammate, Fabrishnova. We have seen some great vaults, but this was equal to those, and she came up with the landing everyone strives for. From Kochetkova and the Russian team over on the vault, back to the United States team. Fourth place currently in today's competition. About four-tenths of a point behind the Ukraine in third. We do not yet have the score for Sunny Maduna. Strong legs, spin. Okay. Up high, pull, lift it, and punch front. You can hear. Right, the last tumbling pass, you gotta make sure. You gotta make sure that on the last tumbling pass, you put it in the middle of the floor. All right, so as you're lifting, you're landing straight up and down. I want you to lift up and legs together on the landing. A lot of instruction from Coach Steve Nuno for one floor routine. He wants good lift on the tumbling passes and stick on the landing. He wants them in the center of the floor. The score for Sunny Maduna, a 9.55, so a solid score for the United States. Not outstanding, but strong. The score back over on the bars for Niznik was a 9.475. Kunetsova, we were watching shortly on the beat, was 8.95. Are the routines we have seen score in the 9-8 to 9-9 range on floor really had incredible difficulty, you know, with double layouts and ending with full twist and double back. And you really need that for that big score. So that was a good score for them. Webster has been consistent today. Scores between 9-5 and 9-7. Not bad. It's the best she's done it all week.
just 23rd on the U.S. team in 93, now a member of the Goodwill Games team. That's Mariana Webb. A strong day for her. Now on the uneven bars, this is Malia. The Ukraine team. Currently in a battle with the United States for third. Bart, she has an interesting combination right here. Wow, that's the best she's done it all week. And the amazing thing is she doesn't do it from a high position from handstand. Oh, that was a little jumpy right there. It's the best way to describe it. She shot it out over the low bar and didn't do much with it. Focusing double back on the dismount. A skill she performed is called a Kim Bong Soup, who first performed it at the 91 World Championship. Easy for you to say. <laughs> I think at the age of 10 she was there. Right there, and then she goes back, she adds to it, does a full turn. Now back over to vault, Fabrishnova. Kocheskova's second vault was a 9.8. Yeah. Double pushing yeah. Yurchenko, they are just pulling away from the field. They really are. By miles. They just have a higher level of difficulty on every event. Better technique, better form, better consistency. And it just adds up. It's as if they know it. They know that they're much better than the other teams here and really aren't even that intense on the landings. Then we go back to the floor. Now, this is little Jenny Thompson. She struggled on a couple of events today, but I think this has been a good learning experience for her. The score for Mariana Webster was a 9.5. She's the junior national champion on this event when she was 11 years old, the youngest champion ever. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Three whips to a triple flip. Now, everyone keep in mind, she has a broken toe as she's going through this. This is a tough, tough gym now. Way to go. back over on the uneven bars, Malia, 9.65 for the Ukraine. Amazing. Bart, when, do you remember when you first told me about this gymnast? She was 10 years old, and you said she was going to be all of Kim Zemeckel's passes at 10 years of age. I think that was an indication of what was to come, and we're seeing it. Out of Wichita Falls, Texas, and then moved to Bella Caroli and trained there for a couple of years. Oh, her hand just touched, barely. I don't know if the judges could see that. Back to vault, Fabrishnova. Better landing. Double twisting your tango. I can't tell you how hard that vault is. It's becoming a little bit more common, but it's still tough. As you can tell, once again, the competition is sort of fast and furious. One routine finishes, and we cut quickly over to the next. Now we're back over to the uneven bars. Bulakova from the Ukraine is ready to perform. <laughs> Excellent body line, good height on that release move. That's the kind of height you want to see. It's much more exciting. Double front, half twist. <laughs> Terrific routine for the Ukrainian team. We'll be back with more gymnastics, and we're going to see Shannon Miller coming up on the floor exercise. The final performer here for Russia, Orkina, will be ready to go on the vault. 
This fault, Kathy Johnson, is really unusual. We saw it a few months ago at the Worlds, and you were really impressed, weren't you? She performed it so much better now. It's, it's much more impressive because the first time we saw it, it was just unusual. It wasn't that well done, but it was so unusual, it earned her the silver medal there. Now she performs it with height and distance that really makes it amazing. It's a very complex ball. It's a round-off entry ball. Then she does a half twist onto the horse. Half twist off, back pike out. Now you try and repeat that. So Yurchenko, Pike Cuervo. Beautifully done. Shannon Miller now for the United States on the floor exercise, the final performer for the U.S. here. The U.S. in a tight battle with Ukraine for the bronze medal in the team competition. We've seen this routine for a few years. In fact, she has a new routine in the works, but it's not quite ready. This one is always a favorite, though. On a high note for the U.S. team, Jenny Thompson had a 9.6 for her floor exercise routine. That'll help the team. And that's a little different pass than we've seen at the World Championships. She started doing front tumbling, but now she's added to it some. Finally, a smile from Shannon Miller. That's the first one we've seen, well, since we've been in Russia, wouldn't you say? I'd agree. To the vault now, from Russia, Horkina. 9.8, the score for her first vault. The Russians clearly outclassing everyone in the team competition here. That's the ta-da on the finish. Give it that added little bit of something for the judges. But she deserves it. Look at that. Just a very complex ball. To the bars now, Podko Paeva from the Ukraine. And you won't see a more aggressive gymnast. Watch her go after every position. And the handstand just locks it out. Full over the bar. The same combination we saw Shannon Miller perform. And she's got a big dismount. Oh, a step on the landing. Full twisting double back. Nice difficulty throughout the whole routine. But what's most impressive, straight legs. And look at the toe point. It's so beautiful. The score, by the way, back over at the vault for Horkina, a 9.85 in her second vault. Potko Paeva will await her score. And a strong score for Shannon Miller, the highlight of the day, the highest score of the meet, 9.95 on the floor. Let's take a look one more time at Shannon. But we have seen her over the past couple of years grow four inches, go through an injury, and yet still come out on the floor at every competition and pull it together. That's an amazing athlete. She used to win events based on her sheer talent. Now she's having to use her 
focus and her mental resolve to pull out some of these performances because she's clearly having a little more difficulty yeah. struggling with the acrobatics because she has grown four inches in the last couple of years. The score on the uneven bars for Lilia Potkopaeva from the Ukraine was a 9.8. So here are our final results in the women's team competition at the Goodwill Games. The gold goes to a Russian team with high difficulty and really a team that outclassed everybody here. Romania was second with some solid performance. The Ukraine gets the bronze medal. They held off the United States, who took fourth by less than three-tenths of a point. Well, eight more exciting days of gymnastics to come here at the Goodwill Games, featuring all-around and individual event competitions as well. For now, I'm Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson saying so long from the Lennon Sport and Concert Complex. Let's go back to the studio and Nick Charles and Fred Hickman. So teams in the world were represented in the team competition here in St. Petersburg, and as expected, the Russian team displayed their dominance, led by Oksana Fabrichnova. Her style and execution, and most importantly, her dynamic acrobatics, gave her a 9.8 on the beam. Her teammate, Dina Kochetkova, who was third in the all-around at this year's World Championships, tumbled to her highest score of the day, a 9.875, with grace, elegance, and some power. For the United States, 17-year-old world champion Shannon Miller uncharacteristically needed to dig deep to stay on the beam. After she gave away a few valuable tents there, she went for one of the most difficult dismounts in the competition and over-rotated. Difficulties for Shannon Miller, her score, 9.525. But by the end of the day, she came up with the meet's highest score with a near-perfect floor exercise, 9.95 was her score there. The other young and rather nervous Americans were competing in their first major international event, including Mariana Webster, 15 years old, and Sonny Maduna, also 15, as well as little 13-year-old Jenny Thompson. At 4 feet 1 and just 58 pounds, she's the youngest national team member ever for the United States. She had a disappointment in her first event. She's been suffering from a broken toe and recovered well on the floor exercise to record a 9.6 and with this powerful tumbling her most impressive performance of the day so let's take a look at the final results in the team competition russia romania and ukraine win the gold silver and bronze the united states is just edged out the top